Hello and welcome, I'm DDF Razor, and today I'm going to be doing something a little different. In the background you can see some footage of me sliding my way around the awesome line circuit converted from R Factor 1 to R Factor 2 in the BMW E39 M5, but that's not the point of this video. I wanted to have a chat with you, my viewers and subscribers, about the direction that this channel is going in. If you're familiar with my channel then you'll know that I upload sim racing videos for R Factor 2. If you're not familiar with my channel then well it's pretty much what I do. There may be the odd dirt rally run here or there, maybe soon some dirt rally 2.0 videos too if Codemasters can sort out the connection issues and VR implementation. But yeah, mostly R Factor 2. Now the reason I like R Factor 2 is because in my opinion it has the best AI in the business. For me that's really important. Because I live in Australia, and before some of you ask, yes, I do exist, and no, I'm not being paid to say this to support some kind of global conspiracy, there's not usually many other real people to race against. I work Monday to Friday, 8 to 5, and my weekends usually get filled up pretty quickly with a little inconvenience called real life. So it doesn't make it easy for me to commit to a sim racing league with a fixed schedule, or where the races might be at, say, 6.30pm GMT on a Wednesday, because... Well that's 4.30 a.m. on a Thursday morning over here in Brisbane. It's not really too convenient. Also, because of my current living situation and having very limited space, the sim rig is in the same room as the bed that I share my partner with, and I'm not too sure she'd appreciate me going for a little bumpy drive at Sebring in the middle of the night. Now in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with racing against AI. After all, it is what 99% of my videos are to date, and it's how I've pretty much raced for my entire sim racing career, for want of a better word. I do enjoy it, but it just doesn't quite have the same sense of satisfaction of beating another real human life in a proper race. Considering that I'm going to be starting to do some live streaming very soon, I'm just conscious that you, the viewer, might not find it too entertaining to see me going wheel to wheel with effectively just a collection of ones and zeros for a few hours at a time, am I right? What I really need is some kind of sim where I can jump in and jump out at a time of my convenience, where there'll always be a group of actual people to race against. Somewhere with context. Somewhere that has some kind of online competition system with rankings and licenses and a real challenge. Somewhere that isn't just a collection of online servers that look full, but are in reality just padded out with AI. This got me thinking about iRacing. I've been watching many of the sim races for many years now. Matt Malone, Empty Box, Jimmy Broadbent, Sim Racing MC, Gamer Muscle, Hobo88 and Emery, to name a few. Hello if you're watching by the way, you're the reason why I started making these videos. They all use iRacing, and I've got to be honest, it looks good. The player base is there, even for those of us living on the other side of the world, and there's a pretty decent selection of cars and tracks which are, I'm led to believe, extremely good quality. There's just a little concern I have, money. As opposed to most of the sim racing titles, iRacing is not a one-off purchase with the occasional DLC pack here or there, or everywhere, looking at you project cars. It's a subscription-based service which means month in, month out, you're paying. And it's not exactly cheap either. Sure, new members get a 50% discount at the moment according to the website, but we're talking 150 Aussie dollars a year here. And although there's base content included with iRacing, you have to spend even more money if you want to be able to use the additional cars and tracks which are required for most of the official series. Again, we're talking $15 to $20 each. Now this is where you guys come in. Over the past year or so, I've gained a fairly modest but incredibly loyal group of subscribers, for which I am extremely grateful for, and I love the support I get every time I upload a race. Thank you. I trust your opinion. Even if you're not subscribed, you're most likely a sim racer just like me, and I trust your opinion too. So here's my question. Is iRacing worth it? Now of course I could just go and read some FAQs or troll the forums and get all the information I probably need, but where's the fun in that? Let's open this up for discussion. Get stuck into the comment section and yeah, let me know your thoughts. Is it worth it? Now I love me some R Factor 2, but in the interest of moving forwards and growing, not just as a sim racer, but as a YouTuber too, I need to make sure the content I'm making is not only something I enjoy, but also something relevant for you guys too. Now would you prefer to see me racing against other people instead of AI? I know I'd certainly get more of a kick out of it, but I need to find a platform that suits the very limited time I get to actually sit behind the wheel. Also, what are the Australian races and servers usually like on iRacing? Are there many people online? 
Is iRacing more optimized on the CPU and the GPU than R-Factor 2? Of course, running in VR and recording and streaming all at the same time can be quite intensive. And we all know that R-Factor 2 isn't the most system friendly piece of software at times. Also, what are the driving physics like in iRacing compared to R-Factor 2? Both claim to be right up there in terms of accuracy, but to those of you who've driven both, what are the differences? I've got to be honest though, something that really appeals to me about iRacing is their ranking system, iRating. Now at the moment, if I'm fighting for 14th place against an AI in R-Factor 2 then, unless it's a pretty epic battle, there's not much to be excited about. I mean, it's only 14th place. But in iRacing, I could potentially be car number 27 out of a 30 car field, and 14th place would be an amazing result. I'd be punching well above my weight. I think it'd give my races a lot more context and storyline than they currently have. It'd be a lot more relatable too. The player base for iRacing is bigger, and there's bound to be other YouTubers and streamers in the same races as me. It'd be a great way to get involved in the sim racing community, make some new friends, and really start to build the channel, which is something I feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of yet. It'd be a level playing field, and a great opportunity to find out how good, or bad, I really am. Everybody's got the same opportunities, on the same tracks, on the same cars. If I suck, I suck. There might be bad days, but that'll make the good results seem all the more sweeter. There'll be idiot drivers too, but isn't that better than an unpredictable AI that doesn't really follow a thought process? Now of course, with iRacing, there's no third-party mods for tracks and cars. You get what you get, and that's it. I guess the benefit of this is that you don't really have to worry about the quality of third-party content, which, as I found a few times from failed race attempts, can be a little questionable at times. Dodgy AI, patchy graphics, that kind of thing. We're on the right. Be clear on the left. On your left. Car either side. Car on your right side. You're on the left, free wide. What's that all about? But do you get bored of the options available in iRacing? Sure, there's not a huge variety of content available for R-Factor 2 compared to, say, Assetto Corsa, but that's that's an entirely different discussion for another time. Do you iRacers, do, do you ever get fed up of doing the same tracks and the same cars? I'd, I'd really be interested to know. Right then guys, I could go on for a while, but it'd be a pretty one-sided conversation if it hasn't been like that already, so I'm going to wrap things up here. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments. Also, let me know if you enjoyed this different style of video too, and if you did, leave me a like. If you're new here, then well done for making it all the way through this video. You should probably subscribe and check out my races. I'll leave a link to the playlist somewhere on the screen now. Anyway, thanks for watching and listening. I'll catch you all in the next video.